Now to the Seattle City Council races where seven seats were up for grabs last night. King Five's Chris Daniels is here with how this one is all being spun tonight, Chris. You should have seen my inbox. There is a lot of spin <laughs> on both sides. At the end of the day, really, if the chamber and business interests are able to unseat Shama Sawant, they'll be happy as there would be five new faces on the council. But one of the current sitting council members believe the early numbers are a rebuke of business interests. Lorena yeah. Gonzalez was not up for re-election, but feels as if there was a mandate. Um, I think overall, on balance, um, I, I feel very positive about the early election results and certainly feel as though um, the chamber and Amazon expenditure of $4 million didn't, didn't purchase them what they thought they were going to they were going to be able to buy. Yes, big money was invested in this election, but delivered a mixed bag. Business interests appear to have propped up a pair of candidates, and Labor did too. I'm feeling really positive. Incumbent Lisa Herbold garnered a majority of initial votes, and Labor-backed Dan Strauss was leading after opponent Heidi Wills received a huge financial push. But the same didn't hold true initially in District 3. We faced a completely unprecedented onslaught of corporate cash. Where incumbent Shama Sawant was down on election night, to Egan Orion. For the district system, the work that she did didn't really fit in with the way the district uh, elections work. Two out of three incumbents uh, clearly leading in their races is good. Gonzalez believes, based on the fact the corporate political action committees did not deliver a full slate of winners, that it's a victory. I think the voters have sent a clear message that they are going to vote with their progressive values and that they still want this Seattle City Council to lead. Again, there is a lot of spin on both sides with the progressives versus business battling. There are people at the Chamber of Commerce and at Amazon that are going to be high-fiving each other if Sawant goes down, given what Sawant did during the head tax discussion out in front of Amazon. If she does go down, that would indeed mean five new faces on the council out of nine seats and a mix of moderates and progressives. But we've got to wait until all of those votes are counted. And there are a lot of votes yet to be counted. So her first time around, it was it was six or seven days before we knew the winner between the Sawant race, between her and her competitor. This yeah. time, can we see the same thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the Sawant proponents, the Sawant backers are looking back to 2013 when she ran first against Richard Conlin, who was a former Seattle City Council president. About the same margin on election day that separated her from Conlin, right. about eight points. She was able to come back slowly with the late votes and eventually overtook Conlin. Right. And that is what brought Shama Sawant into power. Her backers are hoping that lightning strikes twice, so to speak. And how many ballots are left? We had the second dump this afternoon, right? We had the second dump, but there weren't a lot of numbers. There are only a few thousand, especially if you just look at that District 3 race between Sawant and Orion. Looking at the ballots that have been received versus the ballots actually counted, we're still talking about 11,000 ballots that have not been counted. When you consider in that race in particular, only a couple of thousand votes separate the two candidates. There is a lot of room there for right. Sawant and a, a way for both sides right now to spin this particular race into their own position and, and what they think is a strong position at this point. Okay, we'll let you days. get back to yes. your uh, inbox, Chris. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks.